Come aboard the USS Protostar, where Trekkies and stowaways are welcomed with this motley crew. As you embark to a different solar system, you're going to explore new planets, new threats, new allies, and Star Trek prodigy Supernova. And a special shout out to Outright Games for reaching out so we can make this video happen. Outright Games, or OG, specializes in family-friendly video games. So, if you've got a little one that you would like to play a game with, these guys are a good place to start. Star Trek Prodigy Supernova is an action RPG that allows you to take command of the crew of the USS Protostar. For those who don't know, this game is directly related to the Paramount Plus original Star Trek Prodigy. So if you're a big fan of the series, then you definitely gotta check this game out. The events in the game take place halfway in between season one. And the show so far has received rave reviews and the animation and the cinematography are stellar in this show. See what I did there? Let's go ahead and meet the crew. The captain of the USS Protostar is 17 year old Dal. Much of Dal's origins are unknown and it isn't even too clear on what species he is. His plucky attitude and his compassion for his crew remind me a lot of another Federation captain. And every protagonist needs a foil and Gwendella makes a great one for Dal. She is fierce, disciplined, and did I forget to mention she is the daughter of the big bad in the series. And who doesn't like an anti-hero? Gwen and Dal are the two main characters of the series and who you will be mainly controlling in this game, but you can also call in the rest of the crew to help you out in your endeavors. The ship's engineer, Jankum Pog, has a snarky attitude and a knack for percussive maintenance. In other words, beating something until it works. The medical officer, Zero, tends to the wounded on the ship and also has telepathic capabilities. Rock Talk serves as a security for the USS Protostar and fosters her love for science when she can. Her size and her rocky exterior gives her massive strength and some invulnerability. And then there's Murph, the USS Protostar's little pet, who's also indestructible. This unconventional crew is aided by the ship's holographic advisor, Janeway. And together, this motley crew tries to find their way in this giant universe. Our voyage begins with the crew investigating a solar system with a sun similar to Earth's. However, the crew see a device encompassing the sun. These readings cannot be right. That Dyson sphere is extracting enough energy to power 10,000 planets. That could explain why the sun is showing such rapid degeneration. At the current rate, I calculate the star's energy supplies will run out within 72 hours, at which point it will supernova. This star's about to go kaboom? Jacob Park says time to get out of here! Zero, turn the ship around. Maximum warp. Before the crew can clear the solar system, a sunstorm causes the ship to crash onto one of the surrounding planets, splitting the crew up in the process. It's up to Dal and Gwen to find their ship and friends. Take control of Gwen and Dal as you traverse this desert scape. With one click of a button, you can switch between our two voyagers. But it doesn't take too long for Gwen and Dal to find danger. The Watchers, scorpion-like robots, who are affiliated with Gwen's father, the Diviner. The Diviner is known for enslaving other species for his own plans. Dal takes the role of a sharpshooter, while Gwen wrecks the baddies with her fretwork, aka special melee weapons. The intro to the game does a great job on prepping you with the gameplay and the controls. There's always a path that will take you where you need to go, but the game does add some rewards and items for exploration. Gwen and Dal realize the planet was once teeming with intelligent life. The ruins of the civilization and the presence of the Watchers give Dal and Gwen an ominous feeling that whatever happened to the inhabitants wasn't good. Built this tunnel. 
This was their home planet, so what happened to them? The Watchers are what happened to them. They were conquered and then enslaved. After solving some puzzles dealing with power cores, our duo find their way back to the protostar, touch base with Janeway, and make a plan of action to track down the rest of the crew and get off the planet. This really sets the stage for our sci-fi venture. Strap those moon boots back on, cadets. Star Trek Prodigy Supernova is a game that is begging to be played with two players. Throughout the game, you will be switching from Dal and Gwen in order to progress through the levels. Gwen is able to bridge fretwork along short gaps for Dal to cross. I'll take it from here. <laughs> Dao has an ability that allows him to blend in with his surroundings, like a chameleon, so he can sneak past highly secured areas. After you successfully track down the rest of the crew, they will be able to aid you throughout your galactic quest. Rock will bulldoze through blocked areas. Jankum works his percussive magic on sealed doors. Time for a little percussive maintenance. Plus, all the crew members, except for Janeway, can assist you in combat too. Murph can create puddles of ooze that deal damage to enemies. Zero electrocutes nearby enemies, immobilizing them for a short period of time. An assortment of weapons can be unlocked for both Gwen and Dao, so you can pick your favorite style of play. Gwen gets an assortment of melee weapons, and Dao gets heavier firepower. In combat, if either Dao or Gwen go down, you can either revive them or wait until they're back up. But if you both go down, you will have to restart the combat section. When you're not turning the Watchers into scrap, you will be solving lots of puzzles in the game that get multifaceted as you go. And these puzzles can be brain teasing. I'm not gonna lie, I got stumped a few times, but don't you worry, your boy pulled through. Some of my favorite puzzle sections were when Gwen and Dao are separated by a temporal rift, leaving one in the present and the other in the past. The one in the past can move objects that would help the one in the present to reach their objective. Gwen, you and Dao are in the same room, just in different times. You're in the present, he's in the past, but you can still work together. The game is going to throw some boss battles at you too, which I had a lot of fun with these. The intensity is dialed up while you fight the boss and some watchers. I've talked about the puzzles and the enemies, but now let me talk about the exploration in this game. The level design is fairly linear, but the developers left plenty of obscure paths to take and loot to find. In fact, after each level, Janeway will assess you and your performance and let you know if you missed anything, giving this game some replay value. The fixed camera does prevent you from being able to see the planets in their entirety, but what you do see is marvelous. Each planet has its own distinguishable color palette, and the environments themselves I found super creative. Each planet has devolved into ruin due to the dying star. Mirios, the second planet you venture to, was once an oceanic planet, but now almost all the planet's water and wildlife is gone, leaving you traversing in what's left. After investigating the nearby planets, Dal and Gwen meet a Neroan, a native to the solar system, and learn that there are a few of their species left. With the Neroan's help, Dal and Gwen are able to shut down the power stations and locate our crew members. And with the crew back together, and with the revelation that a Dreadnought, 
A lieutenant for the Diviner is using all the energy he can muster from the star to a power device that will take him back in time so he can avenge the fallen homeworld of the Diviner and Gwen. The clock is ticking for our crew to stop Dreadnought before the supernova completely decimates the system. And there is no saving you. And I have to say, I really enjoyed this boss fight. Dreadnought has several deadly moves at his disposal, like firing a laser cannon from his arm, and of course, summoning more watchers. Upon Dreadnought's defeat, our crew is able to get back to exploring and helping others in the galaxy. We did. Partners, crewmates, whatever. Through thick and thin, Gwyn, we're good together. Alright guys, well we're about to wrap up this video. I would definitely say that the demographic for this game is probably like anywhere from like the ages eight below. In fact, when I was playing it with all the puzzles and whatnot, it really reminded me of Zelda. And I remember when I was a kid playing Zelda on the Nintendo 64, thinking that it was too hard because at the time I was probably like, uh, I don't know, five or six or whatever, and I never could beat those games. So this, this is definitely like a good prelude into like some of those AAA titles, plus a lot of OG games have a really nice price point too, even brand new. There was a few bugs, but there was nothing that really like completely broke the game because say if you just got somewhere and you got stuck, you could always say to restart at the last checkpoint and you're never that far away from where you were. But thanks again OG, and as for my channel, this is my first video starting off my season two. So there's plenty more videos to come out. We got a new year coming, so it's been a time for me to refocus and um, you know really start putting these videos out like I want to. But guys, until the next video, y'all be good. Peace.